So, you just bought your rental in Enable, or you're about to buy one, but you're not too sure what else you can do to manage your asthma symptoms. My name is Avi, I'm the patient care specialist here at Pharmaca, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you five tips to boost your lung health. So, let's get into it. If you perform tip number one properly, it can bring about some big changes. All that it requires from you is to do a little bit of auditing. That tip is to avoid environmental triggers. By the way, make sure you subscribe and watch all the way until the end of the video because making use of all five of these tips will make a massive difference to your asthma symptoms. Different environments contain asthma triggers such as irritants, allergens, pollutants, or cold and flu viruses. Whilst we can't completely control the occurrence of triggers, we can take steps towards managing your exposure to them. Common indoor triggers include dust, smoke, mold, and household pets. And I'm going to give you some ways to reduce the impact of those triggers. To reduce the impact of dust on asthma, make sure you become best of friends with that vacuum cleaner. A vacuum containing either a double-layered microfiber filter bag or a high-efficiency particulate air filter is best. Also, make sure you're keeping your home tidy with practices such as leaving your shoes at the door, not keeping clutter around so dust doesn't accumulate as quick, and regularly tidying up. To prevent indoor smoke from triggering asthma, it's pretty simple. Avoid indoor smoke, avoid secondhand smoke, and just avoid smoke at all costs. To stop mold from triggering asthma, remove visible mold from homemade remedies such as white vinegar, baking soda, lemons, and essential oils. Extractive fans and humidifiers are also tools that can aid this process. To prevent mold from occurring in the first place, dry wet areas of the home as soon as possible, including damp towels, clothing inside your laundry hamper or washing machine, as well as indoor plants. Also, look out for leakages around your kitchen or bathroom or other sources of water. It may be best to call a plumber in case of these events, unless you fancy a bill of plumbing. The same substances that trigger an allergy may also cause asthma signs and symptoms, but how do you stop your furry friends from triggering asthma? <coughs> you take an allergy treatment. Antihistamine tablets and nasal sprays help alleviate your symptoms if you have a pet allergy or other allergies such as hay fever. Ensure you're washing your pet's bedding and toys frequently at a high temperature to reduce the accumulation of dander. Groom your pet regularly and on a weekly basis whilst maintaining your pet's diet so it reduces the appearance of dry skin through sufficient amounts of fatty acid. Create pet-free zones in your home to reduce exposure to allergens. Outdoor triggers also include dust, smoke, mold and pets, as well as other triggers. However, you have less control over the outside. But I've got just a strategy for you. Individuals with asthma have a higher likelihood of developing hay fever, meaning pollen from trees, weeds and grass are triggers. Air pollution can also be of detriment. So make sure you're checking the weather forecast and air quality before heading out and as I mentioned earlier, make use of an antihistamine. Cold weather is also something to be considered as during these months individuals are more likely to stay indoors. This means the likelihood of developing a cold or flu are higher, which is not good for your asthma symptoms. This allows these viruses to develop more resilient lipid coatings which makes them more resilient and easy to spread as they can stay in the outside air for longer. And to prevent the development of a respiratory infection, we can do things such as washing your hands often and thoroughly, staying away from overpopulated places and getting the flu vaccine as early as possible. So moving on to tip number two, which is to use your inhaler correctly. In a review of asthma device errors, 87% of people studied made at least one mistake when using their metered dose inhaler. The implications of correct inhaler technique include reducing the risk of an attack, being able to cope better with triggers, improving the quality of your sleep, causing less disruption to your day, as well as the capability to exercise more regularly. Common errors that people make when administering their metered dose inhalers include not shaking the inhaler first, holding it in the mouth incorrectly, not fully breathing out before taking the medication, failing to correctly time the inhale with the puff, breathing the medication in too slow or not deeply enough, not holding in the breath containing the medication for long enough. And you can find out how to use a reliever inhaler properly by scrolling down through the description, clicking on that link, and it will take you to our health center blog. However, wait until the video is done before you go there. Let's move on to tip number three, which is to exercise. A 2011 study found that when assessing how exercise impacted asthma, asthma patients who followed a 12-week exercise intervention had improved asthma control and quality of life compared to asthma patients who did not take part in the exercise intervention. 
the group of patients who exercised also had significant improvements in aerobic fitness and required less advent medication than those who did not do the exercise intervention. Regular physical activity for people with asthma can improve symptoms in the following ways. It increases lung capacity, strengthens muscles, improves cardiovascular fitness, reduces inflammation, and improves endurance. If you're worried about exercise inducing asthma symptoms, then here are some ways you can lessen the impact. Exercise indoors if the weather is cold or pollution or allergen levels are high. If exercising in the cold, wear a mask over the nose and mouth to warm the air and breathe. Carry your reliever inhaler with you and use it 15 minutes before starting exercise or whenever your GP has recommended that you use it. Start exercising slowly, incorporate a warm up and cool down into your session and avoid exercising if you are unwell. But what exactly are the best forms of exercise? Any exercise is good as long as it gets your heart going faster. It's also important to state that you find activities that you enjoy as it's more likely that you keep doing them. In order to make the most of an exercise regime and assist in the process of recovery, whilst allowing you to take on the adaptations of exercise, you need to make sure you're eating well. Which leads me nicely onto tip number four, make dietary changes. It's recommended that asthma sufferers avoid certain groups of foods that can induce asthma symptoms. One of these groups is the inflammatory foods and drinks. Examples of these foods and drinks include bread and processed meats, carbonated and sweetened drinks, fried foods, refined carbohydrates, snack foods that are high in sugar and salt, and alcohol. The inflammation caused is a result of the body activating the immune response, which causes swelling and bruising in the airways. This in turn can initiate asthma symptoms. Consuming these foods on a regular basis can also lead to weight gain, especially if no calories are being burnt off through physical activity. This extra weight can compress the lungs, which makes it harder to breathe. In addition, fat tissue induces inflammation, which can affect the lungs by restricting airflow. Another group of foods to look out for are the sulfites. Sulfites are an umbrella term for six different substances, which are sulfur dioxide, sodium sulfite, sodium bisulfite, sodium metabisulfite, potassium bisulfite, and potassium metabisulfite. Sulfites are chemicals that are used as preservatives to slow the growth of bacteria and mold as well as stop the discoloration of fruits, vegetables and seafood. This study shows that sulfite sensitivity affects up to 13% of people with asthma, causing symptoms like trouble breathing, wheezing, dizziness and nausea. Sulfites occur naturally in some foods and are added to some foods and drinks. These include lettuce, tomatoes, eggs, salmon, filled potatoes, wine and beer, fruit juices, pickled foods, shrimp and other shellfish. To avoid sulfites, there are five things that you must do. One is be wary of the foods that I just listed. Two, check any food packaging labels just in case there's any sulfites in the food that you're about to eat. Number three, if you're at a restaurant, ask the waiter if there's any sulfites in the food. Number four, check in with your GP to see if the medication that you take for your asthma contains any sulfites. And number five, prepare an action plan in the case that you do ingest some sulfites. I said sulfites way too many times, so let's move on. The fifth and final tip is to stop smoking or stay away from smoke. It's known that smoking is harmful to your health and increases the risk of developing several serious health conditions. For asthma sufferers, there's an elevated risk of damage to lung health through smoking as well as secondhand smoke. This is because people with asthma have airways that are more sensitive to irritants and allergens, such as smoke. Smoke irritates the airways and inflames the lungs, which can induce asthma symptoms and attacks whilst making the condition harder to control and the lungs more susceptible to cold and flu viruses. Tobacco also reduces the effectiveness of asthma treatments, so I recommend that you stay away from tobacco smoke as well as secondhand smoke, not forgetting vapes, which have also been shown to be harmful for asthma sufferers. If you want to learn more about using an inhaler properly or you want to learn how to stay active with asthma, then check out the links in the description or check out this video right in front of me and I'll catch you in the next one.